Hi everyone, it's Norma Jean again. It's Sunday morning. I'm getting some Sunday dinner ready for my family. And what we're going to do today is a stuffed meatloaf. Uh, actually mixed as a meatball. So it gives it a little bit of an Italian twist. So let's call it an Italian stuffed meatloaf. Um, when I serve this, I serve it with marinara sauce. A nice plain fresh marinara sauce. I have that already on the stove going. That's going to be a recipe for another day. Um, but right now we're going to concentrate on the meatloaf itself. There's a few steps to it, so let's get started. So first thing I did was this morning I boiled uh, five eggs. So you want hard boiled eggs and I'm going to just have three ready for the inside of the meatloaf. And I just sliced these nice and thin and have them ready. And the other two that I have reserved will be later for serving it. Okay, so three nice thinly sliced hard boiled eggs. I'm gonna put that one side. Now we're gonna get the meatloaf itself mixed. And if you can follow me out, my filming person is here with me again. You know, I work in a very small pantry. So some kudos to Laura Jean for her filming that she does because we don't have much of an angle here. So I have Pecorino Romano, nothing like it. Eggs, my hamburger. And then we're gonna get some ham, some cheese, some milk for the mixing. Actually, I'm gonna put this ham and cheese here. So let's get this started. So I'm using, this is um, three and a half pounds of hamburger. I'm using a lot, I'm making a big one because the kids are coming for dinner. Uh, this is 8515 fat content. I don't want to be too lean with a meatloaf. The meat loses its flavor. So let's start with, I'm going to use four eggs. And I don't break the eggs in a bowl. So we do it like this and we take a shot. And if I'm picking shells out, fine. But it doesn't usually happen because this is just something that I'm used to. So Okay, so there's my four eggs. This. Next, let me just mix my hands. I don't like handling eggs and then touching other things. So we're gonna put in some, this is just plain breadcrumbs. I'm not measuring, that's uh, about a cup. Uh, maybe about two cups, voila. <laughs> Figure it out, it's about half the can. Now my grated cheese. And this I'll do for you in my hand again. You want some cheese in here, you need the flavor. The breadcrumbs are plain, there's no seasoning in them. So you want to do that. Salt and pepper. Now it depends how much salt you want to put in. I mean, I don't know how salty you like your meat, but keep in mind again that it does have grated cheese in it, so we don't have to go crazy with the salt because cheese has a lot of salt and black pepper. Okay, next thing that's gonna go in here is a little bit of milk. This is a little secret, little trick. I don't know if it's a secret because I'm sure some other people do, but a little bit of milk into that keeps uh, the hamburger moist. Now, into that for some flavor. And I didn't go ahead and pre-chop this yet. But I wanted to show you this. I absolutely love this. This is my little Cuisinart countertop chopper. It's like the best Christmas gift I ever got from Samantha last year. Um, I use it for everything. Most times, uh, like with the fritters and the cauliflower patties that I made, I just hard chop um, the parsley and garlic so you can see it. I'm going to do this a little more fine for the meatloaf because my grandkids are coming for dinner. And they don't like to see the garlic or the parsley. So we're gonna chop it a little thinner, plus I think this is gonna give it a little more flavor. Right, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, nice and fun. Okay. Again, this is like the best little gadget. Love it. it just stays on the counter. I never put it away. It's small enough that it can just stay on the counter. So there's your garlic and parsley. And remember, just like you're making 
a big meatball. Oh, it smells so good when this all gets chopped together in here. What a flavor. Okay, let's put that away. I wanna wanna plug this. Okay, so we have three and a half pounds of hamburger, a couple of cups of breadcrumbs, four eggs, a few drops of milk, grated cheese, salt, pepper, chopped parsley, and garlic. I do have to do a hand wash right now. So here we go. We're gonna get this all mixed together. Now when you're mixing a meatloaf, again, you can make adjustments. If you like an extra moist meatloaf and it doesn't seem moist enough to you, add another egg or add a little more milk. If you think it seems too wet, just grab a can of breadcrumbs, throw a few more breadcrumbs in it. A lot of times it's trial and error with cooking. You like my bowl? A little story behind this bowl. This is a real Italian bowl and not one that came from a store that's just stamped Italy on the bottom. My camera person, my daughter, Laura Jean, took a trip out to Italy after high school. Spent a few weeks there, actually lived right in with a lovely family that's from Johnston. And they asked what I'd like from Italy. And I said, I would like an authentic bowl, something handmade in Italy. And I got it. So I use this for a lot. I use it for serving too, but it's really good for mixing because it's so deep. So this is my real authentic Italian bowl. So both hands, you can use your fist. Get this all mixed good. So far, this looks great. Like it's coming good. I can smell it too. When you mix meat or meatloaf, you can actually smell if you've got enough of everything in there. I can smell the cheese, I can smell the garlic. I can smell the parsley. And you want to make sure everything is mixed in. You don't want to see any hunks of the breadcrumbs or anything like that. Okay. I think that is good. Okay. Here comes the tricky pot. All right. I'm going to rinse my hands quick and move this. Here's the first thing I do is, oh, I moved my stuff. This is a butcher board. It's been clean. This gets disinfected every day because I use it for everything. Everything, everything. But I'm just wiping some crumbs off of it. I've actually had this butcher board for uh, close to 30 years. This butcher board was a gift from my mother and father who do I love to cook. And uh, it's, I've painted the legs on it. I've done all kinds of things to it, but it's the original butcher board. What I did was I just sprayed the top of that butcher board with some pan. Now I'm gonna take some olive oil and I'm gonna put it on my hands. Okay, and we're gonna get this hamburger right out of the bowl and onto the board. And we're gonna press it out and flatten it out as much as we can. Now you're working with hamburger, it's not a solid piece of meat, so it's not gonna be perfect. You might have little breaks in it here and there, but because it's hamburger, it can be molded and you can fix any breaks that you get. This works for a shot, we'll see. The pan's a great help. If you don't have that in the house, just, just get some oil and oil your surface. Um, if you have granite countertops, we work great on granite countertops too. I don't happen to have granite. I'm in a very simple pantry, hence the simple cooking. So this board gets used for everything. Okay, we're gonna start with 
I'm going to give this just another little sprinkle, like not too much because you have breadcrumbs in there. You don't want to dry this out. Why I'm doing this, so I'm giving this a little layer of breadcrumb on the bottom, is so that the cheese that I'm going to put on doesn't all melt out. It kind of holds, holds the cheese in there. So we're going to put the ham right Now you can use whatever kind of ham you want. I got a nice Virginia baked ham for this today. You can use Italian ham. You can use just a boiled Polish ham, whatever you want. I'm going to start with the cheese. Because that flavor will seep right into the meat. So it's not sliced too thin. And I'm going to lay your cheese. Oh, this is like a work of art. So, there's the cheese. Now, we're gonna put a few slices of ham. This gives it a nice, uh, I got a nice uh, honey ham, Virginia honey ham, so it'll give it a nice smoked flavor. There's your ham, you don't have to overstuff it. Now, <laughs> this is strictly up to you. My family loves hard boiled egg. So this is almost like a big brajol, but we call it the Italian stuffed meatloaf. So if you don't want hard boiled eggs in it, you don't have to. You can just put the ham and cheese in it and that'll do. So I'm just gonna spread this out. And this is like three hard boiled eggs. If you want more, make more. If you want less, make less, but that's fine. That's good, we're gonna roll that up. All right, so here we go. Ham, cheese, a little bit of layer of breadcrumb on the bottom, and the hot boiled eggs. Now we're gonna get this rolled up. Okay, don't be afraid to use your hands, and like I said, don't be afraid if it falls apart. It's hamburger. And mold it back together. That's an egg. I'm gonna push that in. So far, so good. Move this over a bit. Okay. Push this in. Roll it more. Oh boy. How does that look? Fabulous. <laughs> look at that. Beautiful first shot. So just keep molding it with your hand. You want to make sure the edges are sealed. You can see a little bit of the ham in there. I think I might actually put this side down in the pan. That came Oh, all right, when you slice into this, we're gonna show you when it's cooked, we're gonna break from this video and uh, I will show you what it looks like when it's cooked and sliced. I wanna make sure these edges are sealed. Now, before we end, I wanna show you what I'm gonna put it into our pan. Now, hopefully you have these. If you wanna come around, my camera person, an enamel pan. I have two. These are the best pans to have in the house. You might have your grandmother's, you might have your mother's. These are mine. I've got these. I think I got these for a shower gift. My big one, I use a big meal like this, a big meatloaf. I have a small one that I absolutely love. During the week, if I just make a small one, I use that little one but we're gonna use this big one. Now, why I like to use this enamel pan with the high edges on it is because of the edges. When it's cooking, the heat 
radiates up the side of the pan and it cooks the meatloaf evenly. Sometimes when you put it in a flat pan, it just to me it just doesn't cook evenly and it kind of dries it out. This keeps it moist because the heat's radiating all, all around the pan. So, so I'm going to just take this, I'm going to plop this into the, oh, into the pan. Let's see, I did lose a little piece under there, but I can just squash it back together with my hand. I'll lift this very carefully. Beautiful. <clears throat> Fabulous. Now, just come over here to the stove. All right, Jean. And before I put this into the oven, I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil over the top. Rub that on. Seal it. That is going to go on a 375 degree oven. Initially, you want the oven up high so that the outside seals up. And then you can lower it down to about 350 to make sure the meat is cooked all the way through. This is it. I'm not covering it first. Okay? So stay tuned. We're going to come back when it's done and it's sliced up. You're going to love this. It's fabulous. done. So we're going to let you see what it looks like in the middle. Okay. So let's get a piece. We're going to take a piece right out of the dish so I can show it to you. A little Papa Del pasta. Sprinkle of grated cheese. Oops. Here it is. Sunday dinner. Italian stuffed meatloaf, Papa Del pasta, on the side peas, hot boiled eggs, and gravy. That's a real old fashioned dish. I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Thank you.